Welcome back. I'm Bill Boggs. Here's a gentleman who still enters our home on television as uh, Fred Sanford, of Sanford and Son. He's currently at Dangerfield. Let's have a great hand for a truly original comedic talent, Red Fox. Hey. Hey, Red. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Red, huh? how could I get my voice to sound like yours? What would I have to do? You'd have to get, get to be my age and be screaming and yelling on bad microphones and hollering out the window and all that kind of stuff. What, what, what does your voice sound like, like, for example, if somebody calls you at 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, wants some information, wakes you up, how's your voice sound uh, when you hit the phone? It sounds like a little bit lower than this. You know, I have a good friend, Louis Armstrong, and I just, I loved him so much, I think I carried his voice. <laughs> no, but I, I, I don't know what happened. It's just been like this for the last 10, 15 years. Well, it works. It worked, it worked for me, you know. I had to play Sanford, so it's how Sanford sound, you know, but it's not me. It's uh, get rid of the voice. Uh, I, want, I want you to tell me something. When I was back right. at, at college, uh, University of Pennsylvania in the 60s, there used to be party albums, a Red Fox party albums. Now, what the... Where were those albums recorded, and what were you trying to do with them? They were recorded in a guy's home, and the audience was a bunch of uh, brothers and sisters from the church. And the church was there. The church? Yeah. That's only, we recorded it on Sunday, so we needed the crowd. Yeah. So the guy knew a lot of people, and, and they asked, invited them by to see the recording. But they didn't realize what I was going to do. And, uh, and uh, for the benefit of somebody who has never heard a Red Fox record, now you were doing stuff then yeah. that other comedians like Richard Pryor and so forth are doing now on HBO. Oh right? yeah, I was the first one. But you I, were the first one. Yeah, I had a lot of jobs that, that were turned down to me. Guys say you can't say this word at at the end of your show, so I put that word in the middle. <laughs> and and uh, I let, I lost a lot of jobs because I refused, you know, because to talk like I talk. I was raised near the pool hall in the barbershop, yeah. so that, I thought it was part of everyday conversation. But I do it. People say I'm blue, but I'm not. I'm purple. <laughs> now, there was there used to be a woman uh, named Moms Mabley. Yeah, that's a good friend of mine. Uh, how much did, t first, for the better, how many young people in the audience remember Moms Mabley? All right, about one third. Who, explain what kind of performer she was. Well, when she first began, she was like a stand-up comic, yeah. and she, she wore like men's suits and raincoats and pork pie hats and loafers. Yeah. And then later on in life, as age caught up with her, she started dressing like old woman with an apron and a gingham dress, you know, and a hat, yeah. almost like Minnie Pearl, and, you know. And she was a funny lady, both times, you know. But she was unique in Harlem back in 1940s, you know, when she had her dress, dress masculine, you know, yeah. and then she became moms. When, you where know, did you used to play back in, in Harlem? I played uh, Small's Paradise, Monroe's Uptown House, Jerry Preston's Chicken Shack. I worked uh, for Canada Lee. He had a chicken shack over on Lenox Avenue, about 136th Street. I worked for him in uh, Apollo Theater. I worked across the street from Apollo at another uh, theater, but it didn't last long when they start c competition with Apollo. They closed down about that was six a months. formidable thing. Yeah. No, another thing I think that I've never heard you explain uh, how you actually came to get the part of Fred Sanford on Sanford and Son. I mean, we know this is one of the biggest hits in television of, of, of that era. How, how did it come your way in terms of the business? Well, the Cleveland Little. And I, we worked in Cotton Comes to Harlem, so he was out in Hollywood, so someone mentioned uh, something that they were going to do a series from England, you know, it was taken from Steptoe and Son. Right. So Cleveland mentioned to the producers that I had just played a junk man in Cotton Comes to Harlem, Uncle Bud, that right. was my role. But I didn't get no name, my name wasn't even on the screen credits in that movie because they never expect me to have a part as important as right. it was, but it was a major part of the movie. But the producers got in touch with me, and I went down and, and did uh, Fred Sanford. But then it, it was called Steptoe and Son. So I said, well, my name is Sanford, so they, you can't use, they can't use the name Steptoe and Son. I said, well, Sanford and Steptoe had the same kind of Sam, sound, yeah. the, the rhythm. So it became Sanford and Son. And uh, Fred G. Sanford was my brother who passed about 20 years ago. Wow, he said, what a So I used his name, Fred Memorial. G. Sanford. Yeah. Now, if people talk about 
you know, you see somebody on a situation comedy now, three's a crowd or cheers, and you know, they're acting, they're actors doing their thing. How much really was required of you in terms of acting on Sanford and Son, and how much was really just getting out there and being good old Red Fox? Well, I'd never had acting before, and I'd had but one role before that. So I guess most of it was just me, because I hadn't been a stand-up comic. Plus, I had a partner. I'd worked with Slappy White for almost yeah. five years. So I had that kind of feeling of talking to you and then waiting till you got finished saying what you had to say and then go back in. So it was like easy for me because I created Fred Sanford because there was never one before. Right. So my grandmother, my grandfather, he walked like Fred Sanford. And my mother, she's 82 today and she had about four heart attacks this week because her check didn't come. <laughs> you know? so, that's the way it works out. You just take some from this, take some from that, and create the character. And you had a lot of fun. How many years was that on altogether? Uh, it's still on. I don't know. Is that in syndication? I, we were on five years. Then it went to syndication. I think it went to syndication mm -hmm. almost going on ten How, years. Now, that means, I and mean, for those who don't know in show business, if you get a, a show on the network for five years, and then and you have a piece of it, whatever, mm -hmm. even a small piece, yeah. and then it goes into syndication, you're making a lot of money. How has the money affected you? Oh, I'm not no effect about money. I give mine away. Mostly, I, I don't give it away, you know, just like, hey, take some. But I mean, I enjoy it, you know, yeah. I mean, whatever it is. Are you still stuff. working pretty much the same? Yeah, yeah, people around me enjoy it, you know, because I like nice things and I share what I have with other people. And I like it. What, what would be your idea, a serious, your idea of, uh, you say you worked, had a good run of work, you know, working on television, mm -hmm. working in clubs, then you got a month off. What's your idea of a really great vacation for yourself? I have no idea. I've never had one. I like to work every week. Because you take a month off and your mind will forget what made you some money. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll forget my act in a month. I really? Mean, really. So if you know this, you've got to do it or you'll forget it. I will. I like, to, I like to work because it's a vacation wherever I'm going. Yeah, get up and make you people laugh. And I, like, I went around the world last year in 31 days because I'm a comic. I went to all the air, air bases and marine bases in Europe, yeah. in Japan, in Okinawa, in Philippines. So that was a vacation. I only work an hour a night, two hours a night. Then I'm off the rest of the day. So that's vacation. So it's vacation time. So I, I have known some comics in my life, as well as you will continuously read about the comic who if he does a show and it doesn't do well, because everybody has a good night or a bad night or a fair night, you know, relives the whole show, what didn't happen. How do you handle, frankly, an off night when the audience isn't with you? Well, I, I don't have those kind of nights. Never happens. No, not now I'm too well prepared, because even like last night, we didn't have a huge gathering, because like I told you, New York is like a weekend town. Yeah, hard to believe. You know, it's right, a I'm there six nights a week, so the first part of the week, like a Monday or Tuesday, maybe a Tuesday and a Wednesday, it might fall a little short of people. Yeah. But I tell them I work just as hard for a group like this as I would for a bunch. You know what I mean? Because it's just maybe 15, 20 people. Right. I give them the same feeling and the same fur, you know, that I would give if it was packed to the wall. Have you heard any good jokes recently? Is there anything to maybe tell? I mean, I mean, you got the kids over there, they'd love to hear Like a small sample. I have no material for this. <laughs> <laughs> There's one adult I'm, in the back. Well, I'll tell him one when I come. <laughs> <laughs> how long, how long are you going to be at Dangerfield? I'll be at Dangerfield until the crowd start coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, really tell, me, tell me whether or not I'm right or wrong in this. The last time I interviewed you, you told me you own about 20 dogs, or am I thinking about No, 14. 14? 14 dogs. What kind of dogs do you have? I have, uh, you name one, I got it. You have I a Collie? A, I have Collie, a Great Dane, uh, German Shepherd, uh, Akita, uh, uh, it's a Shih Tzu, and uh, Abso Shih Tzu, and I have a miniature Doberman, not a miniature Doberman, a miniature German Shepherd, and a Airedale, and I got 51 rabbits. I mean, I had 51 rabbits when I left home. So now I might have 100. What, what, what? <laughs> I've been going a week. Where is home? Home is Las Vegas. But I have a home in Las Vegas, and I have one in California too, but yeah. I can't get to that one too often because I'm working in Las Vegas six days a week. We, we have uh, a cast members who are joining us in the next segment of the Shades of Harlem show down at the Village Gate. Would you stay on and uh, spend like, some more time with us? Sure. Would you do that? Yeah. There's one thing I want to ask you to do. Uh, the director does not know this, so I have to break the center camera. Would you mind just demonstrating the Fred Sanford walk for us? Oh, not at all. All right, hold on a second now. Mark, 
We want to want to demonstrate the walk here. I'll uh, I'll mic you with my mic if you just take off your lavalier. Take off my mic. Your lavalier. That, that. Right, now just just come down here. Right, just start start right now. Now where are we going? Just head head for that camera. The Fred Sanford walk. We'll be right back. Red Fox, Shades of Harlem, right after this.